Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Alex here. If you've ever written code in any language before, there's probably a good chance you've wondered who wrote that language and why. For example, Python has Guido van Rossum, Java has James Gosling, and a brand new language has me. That's exactly right. In case you haven't seen the title of this video yet, I've created an entirely new programming language completely from scratch. So in this video, I'm going to go over my entire development process for building this programming language, as well as throw in some background concepts on compiler and language design. So let's get started. So what is the core design philosophy of this language? What I started with is I knew I wanted a more structured version of Lua. Lua conceptually is one of my favorite programming languages. It is a super fast, super lightweight programming language that can be embedded into handheld or integrated systems. And it has a huge community around it that comes with a package manager called Lua Rocks, as well as a huge variety of game engines and app frameworks. However, there is always a reason why I don't use any particular language for everything. And in Lua's case, it's, I don't like how unstructured it is. And by unstructured, I mean, you know, not statically typed. Um, there's really like no compile time checking for a lot of the stuff you have in Lua, particularly like typing and all that. Lua's dynamic type system is like perfect for scripting and, you know, it's basic use case, which is really small applications. However, if I'm gonna be making something big, like, you know, games or something in Lua, um, I would prefer to at least have like some kind of compile time checking. So that way I, I'm not making so many mistakes as I'm coding on like larger code bases and whatnot. So basically my language is an extension of Lua with an optional type system and classes and interfaces a la, you know, Java, Kotlin, uh, other kind of traditional object-oriented programming languages. So let's talk about some compiler basics. There are three main steps if you want to compile some code. You have to do tokenizing, you have to do parsing, and then you kind of like traverse through your abstract syntax tree that's created by your parser. So tokenization is when you iterate through your input text string, you know, the source code that you're putting into your parser, and you kind of pick out discrete words. And by words, you know, these can be keywords like class, they could be miscellaneous characters like equal equal sign. Um, they can also just be like function names. Uh, whites, uh, looking for white space is a great way to kind of pick out words from each other but if they're special characters like equals equals sometimes you have to do something a bit more involved and the output of tokenization is all those words they're known as tokens now parsing is when you iterate through that list of tokens you just generated and you kind of you use your grammar rules and you can convert those lists of tokens into nodes in an abstract syntax tree Usually in parsing, what you do is you kind of peek ahead at the first node, or sorry, the first token that you're looking at. And for example, if it's the keyword class, you know that, you know, the next token you can expect is probably like a, just some name, you know, like a class name. Uh, and if it's not that, then you know you have something invalid and your parser throws an error. And finally, the third step is traversal. So the output of the parser is an abstract syntax tree. And so in traversal, you basically just go through all those AST nodes and you do something at each node. Um, this is where like the type checking comes in. In my language, this is where, you know, you would output, uh, C or Rust would output to like assembly language or machine code. My language outputs to Lua. And that's basically how you would create a programming language. Building a compiler can take a lot of work, um, especially in C. And I find that it's usually the parser that's the hardest of the three phases to build, um, especially in C. Um, there's plenty of programs out there that you can give it like a list of grammar rules and it'll auto-generate some parser code for you. However, I really wanted to try this like completely from scratch. Um, I had a few moments of regret <laughs> in building the parser for this thing, but, you know, I'm, I mean, I got it working, so, you know, I'm glad I stuck through it. 
Okay, so I've taken enough time to talk about compilers and language concepts and whatnot. Uh, so now I am finally going to show you some snippets of this language of mine. So we're going to start off by showing off one of the new features of Moonshot. You can actually define classes and interfaces how you would in Java, for example. So we're going to use the interface and the where keywords. So we can define an interface called message where, and then let's define some functions here. So message has a function called message. Uh, this function has to return a string. So this is going to be our basic interface and we're going to go ahead and implement this with a class. Call it, I'll just call it hello. And let's create our message function. Hello world. And let's go ahead and assign that to a variable. And let's print out the function call right here. So I'm going to go and call Moonshot. We're actually going to have it print out the Lua output so that we can see what it looks like. And here we go. So let's compare this to the actual like Moonshot code. Uh, when we define interfaces in Moonshot, they don't really have any uh, equivalent in Lua. It's really just a thing for compile time type checking. Since we passed all that, uh, it doesn't really matter that we don't print out an interface. As for our class, well, every single class inside Moonshot, I implement as a function. I mean, this is essentially the constructor and it assigns all of our methods. Like, for example, here, this message function is just this thing. Um, again, we don't need the types after the compile time type checking, so whatever. Uh, and so it just creates this variable that we create right here and it just copies this line over. So if we actually go and run this, let's say, dash o main.lua so that throws into our lua file i'm gonna try running this there we go it says hello world that's exactly what we wanted it to do uh that's pretty good so let me also show you all some of the errors that happen uh, because the whole point of compile time type checking is so that it gives us errors if we mess something up so this function is supposed to return a string but what if it doesn't return a string what if it just returns one uh, then when we go to do that, it says function of type string cannot return type int in main.moon line eight. This is indeed on line eight. So let's say we want to fix this. Let's say we change this from a string to return an integer. Uh, let's go ahead and run this compiler again. Class hello does not implement method message in main.moon. Yeah. It even tells you when you're not implementing the right uh, interface and parent class, stuff like that. Oh boy, I've got a fully functioning programming language. I'm going to look at it on GitHub. Oh, what's MoonScript? So there are a couple of projects similar to what I just built. There's MoonScript as you just saw, but there's also UAScript and Terra. MoonScript is another extension language over Lua that provides, you know, classes. Um, however, it doesn't seem to have like compile time type checking for like non class type values. Uh, and the syntax really doesn't feel like so Lua-ish to me. Uh, they stated in their website that they really liked significant white space, which is kind of like what Python has. Uh, they're not really such a fan of like the different keywords that Lua has. Um, whereas with my language, it's more so like, I want it to look and feel like Lua. Um, well, the MoonScript does sound pretty cool though. As a matter of fact, MoonScript was actually used to build a pretty cool looking uh, web framework for Lua called Lapis. So I might definitely be taking a look at that in the future on this channel.
And then Wei script is actually a fork on Moon script. Um, so it's designed to be a bit more experimental in its feature set. Like the creator is still constantly updating it, which I think is really cool. Um, however, it's a much smaller project and it still isn't really what I'm looking for. And lastly, there's Terra. So Terra is like another kind of Lua extension language. However, it is compiled. Um, it's designed more so for low level systems programming and it, also some meta programming, which I still don't fully understand. Uh, so definitely like I want to check out Terra later on. Um, it's also like fully backwards compatible with C, so you can just straight up like include standard IO.h. And it's also like compiled and type checked, however, it doesn't really have like an inheritance based class system like I wanted, so I'm using that as my excuse to not use Terra <laughs> for, for my purposes. So even though there are a lot of other projects that like just extend Lua, um, all of them kind of have their own separate flavor and different features and whatnot, and I still think my language has its own niche. Um, at the very least, I'm going to be using it for most, if not all, well, yeah, most of my mobile games that I make from here on out. And that's pretty much all I've got. So, if you would like to use Moonshot in any of your projects, you can find it on my GitHub at the link in the description. This was probably one of my favorite projects I've done in a while, and it's also one of the few that I have seen all the way to the end, as opposed to just getting bored of it and letting it die off. So <laughs> I am very, very proud I was able to finish like this project. And now that I have the statically type checked inheritance OOP Lua language of my dreams, uh, I'm going to make a couple of really sick mobile games with this and probably with Love 2D as like the underlying framework. Uh, so be prepared for a couple of like devlog series on mo mobile games in Moonshot. Yeah. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, consider giving a like uh, and leaving a comment and perhaps subscribing if you feel so inclined. And that's all I've got to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.